All right, this is the 137 Unit 1 review. We're going to be looking at some of the question types that we didn't get to in our review in class. Um, we're going to be starting with these uh, number 8 in the part 1, the non-calculator portion. We wanted to look at uh, the amplitude period, phase shift, and min max values for the following functions. So if we look at num uh, 8 part C, we decided to pick these last two. Um, we're going to look at what is the amplitude. So the amplitude, remember, is the absolute value of the coefficient in front. So that means we have an amplitude of positive 2. Uh, we are then going to talk about the period. The period is the normal period for um, cosine or sine is always 0 to 2 pi. So we take the 2 pi and we divide it by the coefficient in front of the x, which is 3 over 2. Now this one's a fraction, so we'll have to multiply top and bottom by 2 thirds. So that's going to reduce all that bottom out, and this would be 4 pi over 3. So that's going to be our period. To find your phase shift, you can do negative C over B. That is the formula for it, but I prefer to do putting the inside of this parentheses in between 0 to 2 pi and then solving that for x in the middle because that will then not only give me my phase shift, which is the first part you're going to get up here when you're done, but it will also tell me my ending value if I was going to graph this, which we will later. Um, so then we're going to subtract pi from all three sides. So that would make this pi. And then we're going to multiply everything by 2 thirds to get rid of that fraction in the middle. 2 thirds times 2 thirds. So it looks like this is negative 2 pi over 3, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2 pi over 3. And so my phase shift, the part you would answer, is the part that it's at the very beginning. So it's shifting. If you want to think about your wave sh off shifting to the left, negative 2 pi over 3. The other thing we want to talk about is the min and max values. Typically, um, we would have that sine or cosine would go between negative 1 to 1, but since this has an amplitude of 2, that would be negative 2 to 2. The only problem is there is a vertical shift at the end of this. That means that your new baseline is no longer zero, because remember, sine usually um, goes up and down kind of with a baseline of zero in the middle. So this now baseline is negative three. So my min value is always the baseline, take away the amplitude, so that's going to be negative five, and my max value is going to be the baseline here plus the amplitude, it's going to be negative 1. So my minimum value for this graph would be negative 5. The maximum height that the graph can get to is negative 1. Okay, let's look at 8D. So for 8D, so we're going to kind of box this part off. Um, we're looking at an amplitude of absolute value of negative 1, which is just 1. So it's a normal negative 1 to 1 before any shifting. Um, our period is going to be the 2 pi divided by the 2 thirds. We'll need to multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction on top and bottom. So that's going to give me 6 pi over 2, which is 3 pi. So there's my period. And then my phase shift, I'm going to put 0 less than or equal to 2 thirds x minus 4 pi over 3. Less, uh, less than or equal to 2 pi. You just put the part that's in the parentheses in between 0 to 2 pi. So we're going to add 4 pi over 3 to all the sides. Now over here that will make that 6 pi over 3 since it needs a common denominator. So if we add 4 to that, that's going to be 10 pi over 3. And then we're going to multiply everything by 3 halves to get rid of that fraction in the middle. Now what that's going to do is that's going to cancel out my 3, so this is 4 divided by 2, so that's going to be 2 pi, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 10 divided by 2 is 5 pi. So my phase shift is actually 2 pi. So amplitude's 1, period is 3 pi, phase shift is positive 2 pi, and notice that's a distance of 3 pi between 2 pi and 5 pi. My min value is, remember, going to be my vertical shift, plus and minus the um, amp 
amplitude gives you your uh, what your min and max is going to be. So if we want to do the min, we need to do the baseline of 4 minus the amplitude of 1. So that's going to be 3. And my max value is going to be the baseline of 4 plus the 1, which equals 5. So this whole graph would be fluctuating between a y value of 3 to a y value of 5. Okay, and that completes the portion 1, uh, the non-calculator part of the test. Now we're going to be looking at the part where you are permitted to use your calculator. And let's look at number 9. I've picked uh, a degree and a radian, so we're going to do one of each. This says list two positive and two negative coterminal angles for the value. Um, so 345 is between 0 to 360 already, so that um, makes that easy. So if it's already between 0 to 360 or 0 to 2 pi, you just have to subtract 360 twice, add 360 twice, or subtract 2 pi twice, add 2 pi twice. We'll talk about why D is a little different in a minute. So if I want my two positive coterminal angles on my two negative coterminal angles. For the first one I would do 345 plus 360 and for the uh, second positive one I will do whatever that answer is let me get my eraser plus another 360. You do have to make sure you're careful and you you know maybe want to type these in twice just to make sure you have the right values. So this is 345 plus 360 so that's 705, and then 705 plus another 360 will give me a second positive coterminal angle. Remember, coterminal means that it, end, it goes around the, uh, the circle multiple rotations but ends in the same terminal side. So 1065. So those are my two positive ones. For negative, I would take the 345 degrees, subtract 360 to get the first one. So 345 minus 360, that's negative 15 degrees. And then I would take negative 15 degrees and subtract another 360. And that's going to be negative 375. So there's my two negatives. Okay. Now let's talk about D, which is negative 8 pi over 5. Um, that is already a negative angle. So if we add, the question is, is it going to actually stay negative or is it going to, uh, you know, go into the positives like we want? So if we want to add 2 pi to this, you have to remember that 2 pi is going to be the equivalent of 10 pi over 5 if we have a common denominator. So that would make this 2 pi over 5. So yes, that is positive. And then if we take the 2 pi over 5 and add another 10 pi over 5 to that, that would be 12 pi over 5. So by adding 2 pi twice, we were allowed to get two positives. Sometimes that won't happen. Sometimes you'll add the, the 2 pi and you'll still have a negative angle. So you still have to add 2 pi. You have to add it until you actually get a positive angle. Um, so then if we subtract negative 8 pi over 5 minus 10 pi over 5, this will be another negative coterminal angle. So that's negative 18 pi over 5. And then we take that negative 18 pi over 5 and subtract the negative 10 pi over 5 again. So this would be negative 28 pi over 5. So there's two negatives. Now there's no right or wrong if you keep going and get more uh, varied answers. You want to stay kind of small. You don't want to get too crazy with it. Um, but you know, coterminal angles go on forever. So just if you don't have the same four that I have, as long as they are equivalent to uh, adding a whole circle rotation to the original angle or subtracting it, then you are good. So let's look at number 10. It says you're given a circle with a diameter of 24 inches with a central angle of 105 degrees, and we want to find arc length right here. This is arc length, and we want to find the area of the sector. So the arc length formula, remember, was S equals R theta. The area of a sector was A equals 1 half R squared theta. So we need to, first of all, remember that you have to be in radians for your theta. And you need the radius, not the diameter. So if I cut this in half, this is D equals 24. We would be looking at an R of 12. Uh, we need to take the 105 and we need to turn that into a radian. So to, to do that, we need to multiply by pi over 180. Um, you do have your calculator here, so make sure you use it if you need it. Uh, those are both divisible by 5. So that's 21 
pi and let's divide 180 by 5 and it may go again so sometimes I reduce it just what, what I know and then I may have to reduce it again yeah this is going to reduce again because 21 and 36 are both divisible by 3 so that's 7 pi over 12 so my theta is 7 pi over 12 okay so let's do our arc length and it says find the exact which means do not go to a decimal so this would be s equals the radius which is 12 times 7 pi over 12 the 12s are going to cancel this is 7 pi inches so there's my exact arc length to find the area of the sector we do a equals 1 half radius is 12 squared times the 7 pi over 12 um, if you want, sometimes, you know, you could square that first, or if you're trying to do it without a calculator, you could list it as 12 times 12, and then you can reduce some stuff, because then this 12 can cancel with that 12, and this one can be turned into a 6 by that half. So this is just 6 times 7, so this is 42 pi inches squared, because it's area, so it is inches squared. Okay, so that's how you do number 10. Um, for number 11, you have a triangle where you know two of the pieces, and it is a right triangle because um, we haven't learned any other types yet. So there's a right angle here, and this is your theta. So remember, everything you do has to be referenced to that. But before you can find the six trig functions, you have to know the third side of the triangle. So this is the height because it's across from the 90-degree angle. Um, this is the adjacent side since it's touching the angle but not the height, and that means this one is the one across or the opposite. So when we do our uh, Pythagorean theorem, this would be a squared for the one we're missing, plus 6 squared equals 8 squared. So that's a squared plus 36 equals 64. Subtract 36. That's going to be 28. So then we take the square root of that. Um, typically, you'd write plus or minus, but this is a triangle, so it's just going to be positive and then that would have a perfect square of 4 in it so this is going to be 2 on the square root of 7 so 2 on the square root of 7 once you have all three sides and you've labeled them as opposite adjacent height remember you can do sine cosine and tangent as long as you know so katoa so katoa sine is opposite over height cosine is adjacent over height tangent is opposite over adjacent so sine of theta would be 2 square root of 7 over 8 which we can reduce down um, that's going to be just square root of 7 over 4 cosine of theta is adjacent over height so that's 6 over 8 which reduces down by 2 to 3 fourths and then tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent so that's 2 square root of 7 over 6 which reduces down to square root of 7 over 3 so there's my first three sine cosine and tangent to get cosecant we flip this one right here so that would be 4 over the square root of 7 but we have to rationalize that so it's 4 square root of 7 over 7 we multiply top and bottom by square root of 7 Go ahead and circle all of these for cos, uh, cosines, a J, uh, reciprocal is secant, so we would get 4 over 3, nothing to do else there. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so that would be 3 over the square root of 7, which if you multiply top and bottom by square root of 7 to rationalize, you get 3 square root of 7 over 7. So there are my six trig ratios. Okay, for number 12, you're given two pieces of information. You are given a cosine and its ratio. So that means you actually know two sides of a triangle. Um, and then cotangent is positive, which a lot of people don't do well when it's cotangent. So maybe you should rewrite that as that tangent is also positive. Because whatever the reciprocal is, the original has also got that same sign. So this says, where is cosine negative, but tangent is positive? That's what we're asking. So if you think about your all science teachers are crazy, that's my way of remembering which signs are positive in which quadrants. Cosine is negative, because uh, cosine is positive in the all and the C, which is one and four. So cosine is negative over here in quad two and quad three. 
Tangent is positive though in quad three. So we are looking at a quad three situation because of the two parameters that we were given. Our cosine had to be negative, which means it has to be on the left side of the origin. And our tangent had to be positive, which the only tan time tangent's positive is if your X and Y have the same sign. So positive, positive, negative, negative. So over here, we're gonna draw a picture of what we know. Okay, so here's our theta. It's always drawn like this where the angle comes away from the origin and you have a perpendicular line to the x-axis. Cosine of this theta would be adjacent over height. Notice I didn't put the negative yet, but the, uh, the hypotenuse is negative, never negative, so that's going to be negative 5 and 6. I would use Pythagorean theorem to find that third side, so that's going to be um, negative 5 squared plus we'll call it y squared equals 6 squared, that's 25 plus y squared equals 36, y squared equals 11, so y is the square root of 11, but in quad 3, that is a negative y value, so negative square root of 11, so that's why it's crucial for you to be in the right quadrant, because you don't know otherwise if you need a negative on something or not. And then I need to list my 6 trig uh, values, I believe, Yes, um, we already know cosine, which means we already know secant, so I'm going to go ahead and write those two. I'm going to write it right here. So cosine of theta was negative 5 over 6, which means secant of theta is negative 6 over 5. Um, sine of theta is going to be opposite over hype, so that's negative square root of 11 over 6. And then when we flip that, it's going to have a radical in the bottom. So cosecant is going to be negative 6 over square root of 11. But we would rationalize that and get negative 6 square root of 11 over 11. Um, and then, or excuse me, oh yeah, over 11. And then we need tangent. So we go back to our actual triangle. Opposite over adjacent, so that's negative square root of 11 over negative 5. So that's going to come out positive, which is supposed to happen in that quadrant. And then cotangent would then be 5 over square root of 11, which rationalizes to 5 square root of 11 over 11. So there are my six trig ratios for 12b. Okay, let's talk about 13. 13, they give you an ordered pair. So you can plot that in the um, correct quadrant. That would be negative x, positive y, that's going to be in quad 2. And you go ahead and draw that as a triangle because it's, it's a trig ratio. Um, so this is the point negative 5, 2. But what that means is the x value down here is negative 5. The y value is 2. We're looking for the hypotenuse. So 2 squared plus negative 5 squared equals c squared. So that's 4 plus 25 equals c squared. That's 29 equals c squared, or c equals the square root of 29. And hypotenuse is always positive, so that's just going to be square root of 29. So once you, again, have your three sides, you can go ahead and make your ratios. So sine, and remember, theta is always at the origin in these triangles. So sine of theta is opposite over hype, so that's 2 over square root of 29, which when we rationalize would be 2 square root of 29 over 29. Cosecant, go ahead and flip this before you rationalize, so that's going to be square root of 29 over 2. Cosine is negative 5 over square root of 29, which is going to be negative 5 square root of 29 over 29. That means secant is square root of 29, negative, sorry, over 5. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be 2 over negative 5, so negative 2 fifths. Cotangent of theta will be negative 5 halves. So there are my six ratios for this one. So the big thing is getting things in the correct quadrants, finding the missing side, knowing if you need to have a negative on something based on its location, and then knowing your SOHCAHTOA and the reciprocal properties. Um, so for number 14, we're looking at, these are the ones where we use our calculator. We had that inverse button because they're asking us to solve for the theta, but they've given us the ratio. So we're going the opposite way. Instead of giving you the angle and saying, what is the ratio? They want us to figure out the actual angle. And we're rounding these to the nearest 0.1 uh, degrees. Now the problem is when you do these, you have to realize that your calculator only gives you one answer. 
if you're in sine uh, of theta, so sine theta, when we do sine inverse of theta, it only reports quads one and four, because quad one is where sine is positive, and quad four sine is negative, because that's cosine is positive down there. So when sine is positive, that happens in both of these regions. So sine is positive here, sine is positive here. Sine is negative down here, since tangent's positive, sine is also negative down here. So anytime you're finding the inverse, it's going to give you something in just one of two different regions, and you have to find the other region that also matches the angle that would be in that region. So let's look at this. So we're going to be typing in uh, the theta equals sine inverse of this decimal. Now I already know that this is going to give me an angle in quad one because this is a positive ratio and sine in the calculator, sine inverse only reports quad one and four and the positive one is quad one. So we're going to use our button and make sure you are in degrees here because this is the degree ones and the next group we're going to be in radians. So four, nine, two, three, and we want to do sine inverse, and that's 29.5 if we round to one decimal place. So my theta is approximately 29.5 degrees. So that's in quad one, and that actually is one of our answers, okay? Sometimes the answer you get is the reference angle, or it's telling you how to find the reference angle. So you have to be careful. So that's my first angle. Um, Sine is also positive, since this is a positive sine ratio right here, in this quadrant. So this is 29.5 as a reference angle as well. So to figure out what this angle is from the zero point, we have to do 180 minus 29.5. So 180 minus 29.5, that's 150.5. And that's going to be my second angle. So there are my two angles between 0 and 360 that have positive ratios for their angle sine uh, of 0.4923. So when we look at E, that's going to be a secant problem. For secant, the first thing you want to do is flip this and make it cosine so you can use your calculator. So we're going to be doing the inverse of cosine of this fraction. So let's go ahead and figure out what that is. So 1 divided by 3.8102. And then we want to take the inverse cosine of that. That's 74.8. Now, uh, cosine, the inverse cosine only gives you quad one and two, okay? And the reason for that is cosine is positive in quad one, but negative in quad two. So if you think about your cosines, cosine is positive, cosine is negative, cosine is negative down here, and cosine is positive because cosine is related to x. x's are positive on the right, but negative on the left. So I knew I was going to be getting something in quad 1, since this was a positive fraction right here that I was doing the inverse of. So then I know that I need to get a second angle in quad 4, because that's the other place that we have positive cosine ratios. So this would be the same reference angle down here. And we need to figure out what that is from 0 to 360. So we're going to do 360 minus the 74.8. So 360 minus 74.8 is 285.2. And those are both in degrees. Don't forget your degree symbols. Okay, and then the last one that I picked for 14 is tangent. I'm actually going to give myself a little bit more space. Give me just a second. Okay, so for tangent, we're looking at, go ahead and get that out of there, 2.3551.
Okay, so let's get our pin. So tangent of theta equals 2.33, and I've already forgotten, five, or 3551, five, see? 3551. Five, okay, so we'd want to do the inverse to solve for this using our calculator, since that is not a nice ratio on our unit circle. Um, and we don't have to flip this one because this is tangent. You only have to flip it if it's one of the reciprocals. So when we look at this one, you have to realize that tan inverse is just like sine inverse. It's going to report um, quad 1 or 4. Okay, that's what it's going to give us. But you have to know what your sine ratios are in each of those. So tangent is positive here. Tan is positive in quad 3 because the signs are the same. Tangent is negative in quad 2. Tangent is also negative in quad 4. Um, so since we're looking at a positive tangent, we're, we know we're going to get quad 1 when we do our inverse, but we're going to also have to find quad 3. So this is 2.3551 tan inverse. That's 66.99, so that's going to round up to 67.0. if we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So that's going to be over here. That means we also have one over here. And to figure that out, we're going to have to add that to 180. So 180 plus the 67. And that is 247. And there are those angles, okay? So let's look at what I've picked for um, the next group. I actually think I'm going to switch uh, one of them. I want to at least do one negative because I didn't realize I had picked all positives. So let's – actually, we can just add it in. It'll be okay. Um, so we'll do, we'll do sine or, or tangent or something as well. Let's actually do – Let's do the tangent on this one as well, just so we have uh, one that has a negative on it. Okay, so if we look at cosecant, this is in radians, though. Make sure you have your calculator in radians. Cosecant of theta, I would rewrite as sine and flip the fraction. So this will be sine theta equals 1 over 6.7614. So we're going to be doing the inverse sine of that fraction. So then this is positive, so remember sine is positive in quads 1 and 2, but the calculator will only give us quad 1. So 1.67614, oops, sorry, it's supposed to be 1 divided by 6.7614. And then we need to take the inverse sine of that, and it's 8.5. So it's a very small angle. So 8.5 degrees. Um, and then, oh wait, that's why I'm not in radians. See, didn't pay attention to my own directions. I'm supposed to be in radians. All right. See, this is why you can get into trouble. So radians. 1 divided by 6.7614, and then inverse sine. So that is 0 0.148. We're supposed to round to two decimal places, so 0 0.15. Now, what you have to remember that that's radians, and if we wanted to convert that to degrees, we'd have to multiply that by, remember, the um, 180 divided by pi, but this is in radians. This is what they wanted in. Okay, so that's my original. So remember, that is where sine is positive uh, 1 over 6.7614. That means that sine also has another reference angle of 0.15 over here. And to find this one, you do pi minus 0.5, okay? Because you're wanting to get the radians, not the degrees here. So pi minus 0.15 is 2.99, so the other angle is 2.99 radians.
Okay, let's look at the uh, cosine one. So cosine of theta equals 0 0.5176. That means that the inverse cosine, we don't need to flip anything since it was an original trig function, not a reciprocal. Um, but we do need to make sure we're still in radians. We are. So 0.5176 inverse cosine. I'm getting 1.03. And that is going to be, uh, if you need to get a frame of reference, remember pi divided by 2 is the top. So pi divided by 2 is 1.57. So that tells you this is in quad 1. And cosine is, this is a positive cosine because this was a positive ratio over here. Cosine is also positive in quad 4 down here. So 1.03 is the reference angle down here as well. And then we would need to do, th uh, not 360, but 2 pi minus 1.03 to figure out that actual radian. So 2 times pi minus the 1.03 is 5.25. So 5.25. Now, I haven't done any yet where we've needed to um, find the reference angle. So I'm actually going to add in, instead of adding in the tangent one, I think I'm going to add in the, I'm going to change my mind and add in the E one here. Because the one that gives us the most trouble usually about reference angle is when you have a cosine that's negative. So I'm not going to do this one anymore, but we're going to add this one just so you can see why it's a little bit different. So let me add some more lines for myself. Okay, so secant of negative 2.0183. First thing we have to realize is we need to change this to cosine by flipping the other side. Now, the reason I pointed out that this one's different is because when you have a negative cosine, you end up in quad 2, and the angle that they give you on your calculator is reported from 0 to quad 2, so it's not actually a reference angle. It's how much is it from 0 to that point. So to find the second angle, we have to locate the reference angle of that ourselves. So we're going to do the inverse cosine of this fraction. So we're going to have 1 divided by 2.0183, and that whole fraction is negative. And then we're going to do inverse cosine, and we're getting 2.09. So that theta that we got right there is 2.09. That is more than the 1.57 that you get when you have, uh, you know, measuring from 0 to pi. So here, remember, is 1.57, so 2.09 is somewhere over here. And that's good. That is one of our angles. It is measuring from 0 to 2 pi, um, but it's not the way we're going to find the other one. So since cosine is negative in quads 2 and quads 3, you can't just put another 2.09 here. What you need to figure out is what's this difference between here so you know what to make the reference angle on the bottom. And that's found by subtracting that from pi. So pi minus the 2.09 tells us that that's 1.05. So this measure right here is 1.05. So that's what we need to add down here. So this last angle, the other place where cosine would have a negative ratio in quad 3 is pi plus 1.05. So that's going to be pi plus 1.05. That's 4.19. So my other degree is 4 point, or excuse me, other radian is 4.19. So that's my second theta. Okay, and then I'm actually going to skip this one as well because this video is getting pretty long. Um, let us go down and do a couple of the graphing ones, and we're going to call that then the end. So remember, if you do find that you have other questions that pop up while you're working through these, you can send me an email tonight. Um, up to a certain point, I'll still be able to answer those before I go to bed. And you're welcome to uh, 
you know, you can't, well, the LRC will be open tomorrow. I do have class before our class. So let's graph these. Uh, we, I believe we already did all the hard work on these because they're the same ones that we had before. So y equals negative 2 sine of 3 halves x plus pi minus 3. That matched up with, remember, 8c up above. So let's go back up and grab all of our information. The amplitude was 2. The period was 4 pi over 3. The phase shift was negative 2 pi over 3. So let's write all of that down instead of reworking it completely from scratch. So amplitude was absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. The period was 2 pi divided by the 3 over 2, which we found out was 4 pi over 3. The phase shift was 0 between 3 halves x plus pi to 2 pi. And I believe when we subtracted this, I'm going to go ahead and just get what we had up above. For both of our starting and our ending, we solved that. And we had negative 2 pi over 3 to 2 pi over 3. So let's write that down. Negative 2 pi over 3 to 2 pi over 3. Sorry, a little bit slow moving through the pages. There we go. So our phase shift was negative 2 pi over 3. And this ratio down here was negative 2 pi over 3. Less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2 pi over 3. Which if you think about it, that's 2 pi over 3 on both sides. That does add up to a distance of 4 pi over 3. And we had our min value being, remember, the vertical shift. Uh, minus the amplitude, so that was negative 5. Our max value was the vertical shift plus the amplitude, which is negative 1. And then because this has a negative in front, it is a reflection of the typical sine graph. What that means is when you have your baseline of your sine graph, instead of going up first, remember we go down and then up. So this is, the, this is negative sine x. Okay, So let's go ahead and graph this one out we would place on our grid. I'm going to mark off negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's my max to min. I always like to put in a dashed line for my baseline at negative 3. Remember, I prefer if you erase that at the end, but if you leave it, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> Um, and then we need to mark off our, our points. Now remember the markers here that we pick, those have to do with um, midpoints. We know that negative 2 pi over 3 is the start of this and we know that it ends at 2 pi over 3. We need to find the midpoints to know our other two markers to know where our main wave is occurring. So the way I think of it is if I already know that these are matching, zero is definitely the middle one because if you add those together, it adds to zero and then you cut it in half. But we do need to find a midpoint for these. So negative 2 pi over 3 plus zero is just negative 2 pi over 3. To find the midpoint, remember you cut that in half. So that's going to just be negative pi over 3. So negative pi over 3. That means pi over 3 is going to be the same thing over here because this will be 0 plus 2 pi over 3. So essentially, this one's got some nice symmetry on both sides of the x, uh, the y-axis. Okay, so on a sine graph, you start on your first point at your baseline. So that's going to be down here at negative 3. And then this is a negative sine x. So instead of going up to our highest point, we're going to be going down to our lowest point. So at negative pi over 3, we're going to be at negative 5. At 0, again, since this is our middle marker, we're going to be back at our baseline. At pi over 3, we're going to be at our max point. And at 2 pi over 3, we're going to be back down at the baseline of negative 3. So this is what one period of that would look like. But it does continue on forever. So my five ordered pairs are negative 2 pi over 3 was at the baseline, which was negative 3. Negative pi over 3 was at my minimum, which is negative 5. Uh, 0, which was the middle marker, 
is at the baseline again, which is negative 3. And pi over 3 is at the highest point we get to, which is negative 1. And then 2 pi over 3 is back at our baseline of negative 3. Okay. Um, to save us on time, uh, I'm going to actually just type this last one into Desmos because this video has got to process and get uploaded so you guys can look at it. So I'm going to type this one in and show you how it does all of the things that we expect it to. Um, Desmos is really great for checking graphs. You can't use it on a test, but um, if you need to check a graph real quick, it's a good tool to use. So it's negative cosine and then in parentheses two-thirds x and then oops, it's not wanting me to do anything there we go minus four thirds or fourth pi third so ah go back in there minus four pi over three I believe I do have a pi button yep divided by three and then Go back to our Word document. I think it's plus two, no, plus four. So plus four. Okay, so well, what I want you to notice is that when, let's go back to our notes on this one and see if this graph matches up with what it's supposed to be. So we go all back, all the way back up to the 8D that we had before. And we noticed that this one had an amplitude of one, but it had a baseline at positive four, right? Because so it was highest point was one, or excuse me, three, and the lowest point, or the highest point would be five, the lowest point would be three, because our baseline was four. Sorry, brain's not wanting to talk. So I'm going to kind of write y equals four in here, not that you would graph this, but so you can see that baseline. And then this had a um, phase shift of two pi, so it's going to be two pi before it actually starts its wave. It is a cosine that is upside down, which means instead of it starts uh, low instead of starting high. And then I think that's it. So it goes from 2 pi to 5 pi. So we want to see if those five points are there like they're supposed to be. So let's move this. So 2 pi, remember, is about 6.28. So 2 pi, 3. So notice this is where the wave is starting. It's starting low for cosine. Then it goes to its baseline. Then it goes to its highest point at 5. It goes to a baseline again. I need to put those points back on there. So 2 pi is at 3. 11 pi over 4 is at 4. 7 pi over 2 is at 5. 17 pi over 4 is at 4. And 5 pi over 3, where it's supposed to end, is at 3. Now remember, how did we get these other x values? 2 pi plus 5 pi is 7 pi, cut in half is 7 pi over 2. So notice that's how you found that middle marker. 2 pi plus 7 pi over 2, you'd make that 4 pi over 2. So that's 11 pi over 2, but then when you cut it in half, you get 11 pi over 4. 7 pi over 2 plus 10 pi over 2, because that would be that with a common denominator, is 17 pi over 2. When you cut it in half, you get 17 pi over 4. And notice, this goes from a minimum of 3 up to a maximum of 5, and the wave we're following is an upside-down cosine, which is down, baseline, up, baseline, down. So I just wanted to show you this one really quickly, um, that it has all the characteristics that we would be looking for, and it has the correct transformations. All right, so that's the end of what I can do for the video. Hopefully I can get this posted really quick before I go to teach my class so that you guys can benefit from watching it tonight. Um, if you do have any other questions, make sure you send me those in an email, and I will see you tomorrow.